The red and blue color combination in relation to birds always fills me with such heart because it reminds me of this book. This is how you lose a time war. It's one of my favorite stories released in the last decade and it's this dense, gorgeous poetry disguised as a high-stakes enemies-to-lovers story where the enemies in question are time-traveling agents standing on opposite sides of a war. And their names are Red and Blue. They start exchanging very snarky letters with each of them trying to one-up the other, and that eventually dissolves, as these things tend to do, into flirting and lush declarations of forevers. It's like, how many times can you say I love you without actually saying I love you? using red and blue metaphors and imagery. A lot, it turns out. And so the story becomes one of conflicted allegiance, and a game board where you are the piece but also the player. What is your goal? What matters the most to you? So whenever I see red and blue birds anywhere, I just kind of pause and grin because it reminds me of fade and defiance and how love cuts through time and space. For the paper, I'm using Canson Heritage. And this is actually only my third time using it. Um, I was kind of shocked when I first tried it last year because it was so different than what I'd become used to. It's very soft-sized, which basically means that you're not going to get the deep heavy colors that you would for Arsh. Like, if you imagine a sheltered Victorian teenage girl who hasn't stepped 10 feet outside of her mansion, that's kind of what this paper is. It doesn't want to do anything out of the ordinary, anything exciting, it doesn't really bloom, and it doesn't lift at all. It's just all very proper and dainty. So I'm still kind of in the process of figuring it out, because it's an expensive paper. First, I'm laying down a wash of cerulean blue, starting from that half circle and blending it out with a wash of the perlin red. So the left side of the bird has the combined red and blue mixture, but I'm keeping the right side purely red for now. With the leaves, I'm putting down a wash of red that's slightly thicker than what I used with the bird. I'm also loading my brush with cerulean blue and dropping them into the red in places where I want variation or a suggestion of shadow. What's nice about painting these types of flat leaves is that you can kind of zone out and find a meditative space because you're not really worrying about the 3D form, just the general shape of the thing.
the space between the large leaves and the bird's head and creating a suggestion of tiny blue flowers. So I lay down a light wash of the red and wait for it to dry a bit before dropping these little morsels of the blue wet and wet. With the second layer, I'm going to deepen the colors with the red and the blue. And for the body of the bird, I'm adding a little bit of new gamboge to the red and blue mixture for depth and variation. So no, it's not entirely a two color painting. For the leaves, I'm selecting in my head which ones I want to deepen in value and which ones I want to keep relatively light. Even though, because even though overall this is a relatively flat style art piece, I still need to darken the leaves in the back to create a sense of separation. Now I'm on to more detailed work with the sword, rendering out the blade and the hilt a little more with the red and blue mixture.
Here I'm adding another layer of blue-red for the head because this area is the focal point of the painting and I want there to be a contrast of values between the bird's head and the sword. Now we're on to the final detail work for the circle. If you were wondering what the heck this thing was, well, it's just a little abstract decoration piece. Composition-wise, I wanted something to weigh down this bottom left side because the direction of the leaves, the sore point, the bird's gaze, all radiate toward the top right in a triangular shape. And that's again the focal point. So I decided on this shape that I cobbled together from various different sources. So afterwards, I scanned the piece and I added a few more details to the circle and general highlights. Because sometimes I can see the areas that need to be touched up a lot better when I look at my art on a monitor. Let me know if you'd like to see more red and blue birds or red and blue anything. This color scheme is like comfort food to me. I'm really stressed by the process and I enjoy the beginning, middle, and end equally which I definitely can't say about some of my other paintings. Okay, take care of yourself, take care of your box of sheep, and I'll see you in the next one.